this Thanks so much, for the questions in chat. Uh, we need to move forward and right now uh, I'll ask Dan to tell more about his flight or fleet company. How should I pronounce it correctly? Uh, it's flight. Yes, but thank you. Material sciences. Uh, whenever you're ready, we may start. All right. Are you seeing this well? Yes. I hope. Perfect. I'm speaking oh. for everyone. Okay. Um, all right. Hello, everyone. And thank you very much for being here today and for your patience listening to all us hungry entrepreneurs one after the other. Uh, I'm Dan Cohen. I'm the founder of Flight Material Sciences, a six-time entrepreneur in science and tech ventures since the 1990s. And I'm here to tell you about flight. So industrial products that we depend on fail when their surfaces fail because of rust or fouling or ice. And we are introducing a radical new treatment for industrial materials to protect themselves using clean lasers instead of toxic coatings. So we're gonna use this technique to protect human life and reduce environmental damage and improve the lifetime performance of products around the world. Now this technology took more than 30 years to develop, but we can show it to you in less than 30 seconds. This is the magnified surface of stainless steel and it's rough and it's random. And when coatings are applied, they eventually fail, which leaves the surface vulnerable and scatters toxic residue into the air and water. So our patented techniques sculpt a new surface texture on that material with a specific function. And this particular surface, which is the lotus surface, repels water and it works on glass or plastic or metal and ceramics and other materials. This is what super hydrophobic metal looks like. The water bounces off energetically and cleans itself. The effect is durable and permanent. And if water can't stay on the surface, ice doesn't hold there and rust doesn't form there and other contaminants just slide away. So our patented techniques have all the benefits of the best protective coatings with none of the downsides. And our customers can use the materials they know and trust, but it gives them new capabilities and we are 100% green. And many of our customers are driven by either client or regulatory need to find a greener way to work. So this has led to a huge catalog of opportunities for us where the problems we describe cost hundreds of billions every year in risk and loss and damage, as well as the loss of life. So we have scheduled a project in most of these areas, both commercial and defense, to prove what we can do, including making almost any material resistant to COVID-19. The work is based on a collection of papers and patents, and we're graduates of helpful acceleration programs in North America and Europe. And we've been recognized in recent startup and innovation competitions for the promise that this technology holds. Our growing team has more than 100 years of experience and across Canada, the United States and Europe, we're now a team of eight and ho hope to add two more by the end of this quarter. So with COVID-19, we were expecting three contracts this year, but there are currently 12 planned and a pipeline of more than 100 more to answer. So every contract, every project we run leads to a license conversation that brings long-term recurring revenue for five to 25 years. So whether it's about protecting life or making resilient products or working in any green future, with your support, we'll expand our mission of making everyday materials extraordinary. Thank you. Thank you, you're very on time. Thank you, Dan. Uh, who would like to be the first to ask a question? To ask a question. Hi, Dan, Henry on here, very quick. Um, number one is I see the traction getting sort of non-dilutive grant. These are great, great things I like to hear. Uh, very, very simple. Number one is, can you maybe share, maybe I missed it, uh, commercial application for your product? That's uh, question number one. Number two is, I think you mentioned you've been developing this or whoever been de developing for 30 years. What, I know, you know, development of these material sciences it does take some time. Why, why is it now that you bring into market? Thank you. That's a good question. Uh, so we have applications, for example, in oil and gas because of rusty pipelines. That's a trillion dollar problem. Uh, in surgical products, um, and I could spend an hour telling you about the projects, but basically it's about rust or ice or fouling for each one of these uh, marine ships, uh, that sail with uh, copper-based paints that poison the ocean, uh, keeping the ice off planes and helicopters and so on. And the signal for us that it was time to commercialize is that uh, we finally found this technology coming out of academic labs around the world where there's been a lot of testing, but it was finally possible to do it in open air and with commodity components instead of a big specialized chamber for only billion dollar R&D organizations. So those were our signals that it was time to commercialize and industrialize. Thank you, the next one. How come your expectations of revenue are so low? 
it sounds like a really big problem you're solving. Well, we are solving very big problems. And um, what we expect is to finance the company with some non-dilutive grants. We're raising our Series A and customer revenue. And the time for them to adopt these into their, um, into their uh, supply chains takes a little longer. So it may take two years in the sales cycle before they finally adopt these licenses. But after that, it's five to 25 years of passive revenue. So that has a deep tech effect on our projections. I'd like to know, uh, your technology doesn't seem to be uh, unique to you guys. I mean, you're, you're quoting a lot of uh, university uh, works and experiments. So uh, how do you differentiate uh, from the, the, the competitors that are going to certainly to arise? And um, my other question is, you have to apply your treatment on the new uh, metal or can you do that on the existing equipment and existing uh, surfaces? Great questions. Uh, to answer the first question, uh, because we are experts in technology transfer, we are going to get those licenses, patents, and innovations out of the universities uh, as they emerge. So, uh, for example, at our lead source at the University of Rochester, um, we got it when uh, after they'd received $15 million for R&D, uh, but before they commercialized anything, and we are now going to be the worldwide license holder. Uh, so that's how we intend to deal with, uh, with competition that may emerge. And uh, your second question was, uh, yes, we can do this for manufacturing, but again, because this is an open air technology, we are also working on, on designs for field uh, use. So we can treat the uh, aircraft in the field or oil pipelines already in the, in the field or electrical towers and other things. Thank you so much. The time is up uh, with further questions proceed in chat. Thank you so much, Dan.